Welcome back. In today's class, we'll be focusing on strong opening for the lower body. So it's deep work in the hips. It's a little bit more advanced. So happy to have you join me. Let's get started. Before we get started, if you want to learn the basics of Iyengar Yoga, I've designed a new course, Foundational Iyengar Yoga. This course is for you if you're a beginner, if you've been practicing for a while and you just want to deepen your understanding, or if you're a teacher and you would like to be more inspired, go back to the basics. So it's a six week course, 18 different classes, and you'll be able to go through at your own pace. You can find more details in the description box below. Okay, sit in Sukhasana, easy cross leg position. Just adjust the buttocks and then bring your fingertips onto the floor and begin to lengthen. Be aware of the front body lengthening forward and bring your hands onto the floor, extending forward, outer hips descending, both sides, lower back lengthening. You can feel your front ribs along your shin bones or calf muscle lift up a little bit and lengthen forward any amount without lifting your hips up. So you can just bring your arms line with your shoulders, your, your head between the arms, moving the hips down. Be aware of the abdomen and how that's moving back from the abdominal area toward the lower back. Helps you bring that weight onto the, onto the hips. Inhale, come up. Moving to the side now, you're gonna turn, turn the trunk, turn the chest. Walk forward. And just be there. Keep that outer hip moving down. You can bend the elbows. Keep the hands on the floor in a way that will help you to stay grounded with both hips. And then bring the head down. Breathe into the back body. Inhale, come up. Coming to the other side. Turning, be on the fingertips, use the fingertips. Turn that back, move the ribs down and lengthen forward. So if this side is lifting up, lengthen more through this side and release the head down. Feel the abdomen and the chest reaching the thigh. Breathe into the back body. Inhale, come up. Change the cross on the legs. Urdhva Hastasana, come forward with the hands. Walking forward. Observe if there's any difference in the left side, the right side. And the second time that you're doing it with the legs crossed differently. Take a few breaths there, hips descending. Stay in contact with the abdomen as it moves back. Inhale, come up, coming to that first side, turning. Use the fingertips on the floor to turn and then start to lengthen forward. Observing the outer hip, outer hip is moving down. Wherever you are in this pose, just be there and release the back body toward the front body. Feel the abdomen on the thigh. And then if you can bring your head down, bring your head down. Come up, turn to do the other side. Moving the hands forward, lengthening. Keeping this hip pinned down. So the side you're turning away from, keep that hip descending, use the hands on the floor, bringing a little pressure to the fingertips and to the arms, and then release. 
back body descending down towards your thigh. So the abdomen is resting on the thigh. The chest is resting or moving in that direction. Inhale, come up. Okay, we're going to go into Gomokasana now. So you'll take your leg out to the side. So we're sitting on the floor. And I'm bringing both feet out. So the knees are over one another. The feet are out to the side. And there you just adjust your hips so that you're sitting evenly. Take hold of the front of the knee. Inhale, lift up. Keeping the feet pressed down, both hips are moving down. Start to move forward. So be aware if you need to adjust the foot, turn the foot so that you can keep that pressure on the feet and lengthen forward. Again, coming down. Breathing into the back body, hips descending, observing that stretch that you can feel. And then inhale, come up, and come into a twist. So bring your arm up, take the other hand back, take the hand on the outer knee, inhale, lift. Exhale, turn. So release the hips, release the knees, release the thighs, and create that space right up through the front of the body. Exhale, turn. And release. Come back to Dandasana. Change the cross on the leg. So bringing this foot under, bringing the leg over. So take your time to get into this. Bringing the foot back. You can release the calf so that if the calf is getting stuck there, that you organize the legs in a way that you can bring the knee over the other knee. And hold on to the knee. Inhale, lift up. Bring your arms into Urdhva Hastasana and then reach forward. As you reach forward, feel how the hips want to lift up. Keep the hips moving down, keep pressing the feet into the floor, and then finally bring the hands down. Maintaining that length through the front of the body, walk the hands forward, and release the head down. Stay with the sensations that you feel. Releasing the lower leg if you're not all the way on the left hip and the right hip. Stay with your breath and with any strong sensation. Let your exhalation release it even more, softening, lengthening. So we can have strong sensations in the hips. We can store a lot of memories, a lot of trauma, a lot is stored in the hips. So just be aware there. to allow yourself to be there long enough that you can experience that and move through it, move toward it. Come up, coming into the twist, bring your arm up, bring your hand on the outer thigh, outer knee, inhale, lift up, exhale, turn. Reaching up, both hips, well grounded, and from that fixed action of the hips and the legs descending, create that length through both sides of the trunk. Exhale, turn. Using the front arm as a bit of leverage to get that turning action from the back body toward the front. Rotating your shoulder back, and then release. Good, and then come back into Dandasana. Extend your legs out. All right, if you have a blanket handy, we're gonna go into Marichi Asana 3. So you can have that blanket. If you don't require the, the blanket, then you can just sit on the floor. 
Bring your foot in. Holding the knee again, lengthen up. Bring your arm up and then bring the arm over the leg. Take a few turns at it. Bring the hand back and then bring the knee back. Inhale, lengthening up. Exhale, turn. Keep that Dandasana leg straight. Using that back hand to keep the back trunk lengthened. Using that front arm, be aware of that back body as you turn. And release. Straighten both legs. Other side, bring the foot in. Reach up. If you need to lift up over that hip, you can come up, bring your arm down. Position your bottom hand. <clears throat> Inhale, lengthening up. Exhale, turn. Exhale, coming out. Come back into Dandasana. Now from Dandasana, we're going to come forward and bend the left leg, come into a 90 degree angle. You can keep this blanket here in case you need it. I'm gonna take the other leg back. And when I do that, I want the hip facing toward the floor, thigh facing toward the floor. This leg is at 90 degrees. If that's not possible for you, you can bring it closer to you. Be positioned on the hands where you adjust yourself. So the hip is moving down, the hip is moving back, and then come onto the fingertips. Extend through the back leg and lift the chest. Keep that left leg grounded. The right pelvic rim coming down. And then come forward. Extend. Reach the arms forward. Stay with your breath. Stay with that sensation that you can feel in the hips. Keep extending the leg right leg back as you descend the left hip. And then come up. Switch sides. So now right knee is bent. Bringing the other leg back. Be on the front of the thigh. Move the foot down. And just position yourself. So if that's not possible to go 90 degree, then you can bring the leg in a little bit so that they'll, you'll have more freedom there to bring your pelvic rim down. And then bring the fingertips to the side, lift up, and rotate that left pelvic rim down toward the floor, left thigh, lift up. And then coming forward, deepening as you move the hands forward to support you. Walking your arms, lengthening the front trunk, releasing the hips down. And then coming up, swing your leg around. And now we'll come up and we'll use a chair. All right, we're moving over here and I have three bolsters and I have a chair. And we'll, I do have the mat underneath the chair in case the mat, the chair would slide. So I'm just gonna bring it a little bit further away from the wall. So about one arm's leg distance, well, arm's length distance away from the wall. And I'm gonna stand on in front and I'm gonna bring my leg up on the bolster. So I'll bring my right leg up first and just bring it to the top of the chair. And here I'm going to get that external rotation right at the top of the thigh and rest the leg on that chair. 
Okay, so just be here. You can bring your arms up, Urdhva Hastasana, reach up, hands in Baddha Gulianasana. So you feel that power coming from the bottom leg, but at the same time dropping, dropping this hip, just releasing. And then I'll come forward, bring my hands to the wall, and press into the wall, bring more weight onto the, onto the hip as this hip descends, as I lengthen forward. So the front groin is deepening, and I'm getting that extension. I'm using my fingertips at the wall to press and come forward. Be aware of what you feel in the hip socket. Stay with it. And then come up. So again, you bring the foot to the top of the chair just so you have your balance. Bring the leg down. Other side, you bring your leg up. Externally rotating the leg, turning both hip bones forward toward the chair. Release that hip down. Stand tall on this leg. Bring your arms into Urdhva Hastasana. Bhattagulianasana. Changing the cross on the fingers, reach the arms up. So establish that length through both sides of the trunk. And now coming forward, bring your fingertips onto the wall so that you continue to get that length. Come forward over that front leg. Extend. And then come up. All right. And then stabilizing yourself, bring the foot down. OK, I'm going to take the bolsters away now. And I'm going to sit on the chair. So I'm going to have the chair facing the wall. And I'll start with my right leg. So I bring the right leg up. So I'm bringing the <clears throat> calf and the thigh together as I rotate that leg and bring the foot up. So I want to have a little bit more distance. So I'm going to come a little bit further away from the wall. I want to have that angle to go forward like we did earlier when the leg was on the bolster. So I'm just going to bring the foot onto the knee to get a little bit more of that rotation and then walk the arms up. Keep the foot on the floor, a Tadasana foot, Lengthening from the foot to the knee, back into that hip. Keep both sides of the trunk lengthening equally as you move forward. You can come forward a little bit deeper. You can bring your hands down. Pressing the hands against the wall. You can feel that opening through the back of the hip. Release the knee down. So as you get this external rotation, the more the knee moves down, the more you're going to start to feel that in the hip. And then come up. And now turning that other leg, the left, left foot, on the knee, that external rotation, moving that knee down, first coming up to that higher height. Have the foot underneath the knee directly and use that foot to press into the floor as you start to come forward. So you're opening through the armpit chest area, you're lengthening through the side trunk, anterior spine is lengthening, shoulder blades are moving down. And then to come a little bit deeper, you can bring your hands lower. Keep your hips grounded so you could feel that hip lifting up a bit. So pressing with the hands, keep the hips descending down as you reach forward. I've almost got the crown of the head at the wall. So depending on where your chair is, coming forward. And then coming up again, let's do the second side. <clears throat> bring the leg up. This time, bring your hands down. Take your arms on the chair 
and from there, lengthen forward. So I'm using my arms to pull me forward and go a bit deeper. Release the head down. Stay with the breath. Stay with the sensation you feel. And then come up. Take the foot over. Again, coming forward. This knee is descending. Take your hands back. First lengthen. Hips down, releasing forward. As I descend that left knee, left thigh down, bring my weight forward. Chest is on the shin and the thigh. You can keep your head lengthened. Pulling with the hands so that you keep the weight on that right hip. And then come up. Good. OK, now we're going to go back to the mat over here and come onto the floor. OK, <clears throat> coming back to the mat, we're going to practice Supta Padangasana 1 and the variations. All right? So you're going to lie down and just come into Supta Tadasana first. So extend the legs, bring the whole body onto the floor. And now you're going to bend both knees, adjust your pelvis, bring your right leg up, and you're going to bring it onto the knee. OK, from there, you bring the leg in. And I'm going to hold the leg. Just bring hands behind the back of the thigh and start to bring that leg toward me. So this is that same externally rotated leg that we were having earlier. You can take the hands on the th knee and on the foot and bring the leg in. And then bring the foot onto the floor. Extend that leg. Again, bring the leg up, externally rotate it, hold it with the Left hand, getting that external rotation. Bring the hand underneath the calf and start to bring that whole shin bone and calf towards you, like we did when we were on the bolster, moving down toward it and then on the chair. So you can take the side of the foot and then come up and bring the elbow, the crease of the elbow, into that foot if you can. So I'm lifting my head. I'm walking the foot down closer. I've got the side of the foot there where that ankle is, right in the crease. Both inner and outer ankles are parallel to one another. So not pressing that outer ankle up, but keep it level with the inner ankle. And then take your arm around the leg again, holding. You can hold the hand. You can hold the wrist. Take, get a nice grip there so you can draw the leg in towards you. And be with whatever sensations you can feel in that hip, that outer hip. Breathe into that. Let the breath go. Let that release come. Stay with it. Keep that extension through that left leg. Come up, bring the leg down, come back to Supta Tadasana. Bringing the leg in, hold the back of the leg, bring the thigh in. So you can feel that ankle on the front of the thigh. Observe what you can feel there in that left hip. Bring the leg towards you more. Start to observe and breathe into that space at the back thigh, the back hip. It's 
Stay with whatever sensations you have. Bring the foot back onto the floor. Extend the right leg. Now bend the knee again. Have the foot on the front of the thigh. Take hold of the foot and the ankle. Lift up. Take your arm over the outer side of the foot and hold on to the knee. And as you lift the head, bring the leg towards you any amount. Bring the arm in the crease. Holding the hands, holding the wrist, drawing the leg towards you, extend your right leg. Keep extending through the heel, draw the toes back towards you. As your head stays lifted, feel the chest moving down, the leg moving toward the chest. And then if you can, you can bring your shoulders down, your head down onto the floor. Bring that leg in towards you just a little bit more. Stay with whatever you feel. And then lift up. Bring the leg back down to the floor. Lift the other leg up. Again, taking hold of the leg, getting that deep rotation. Hug the leg in towards you. Extend the left leg. Bring the outer foot, if you can, into the crease of the arm. If you can't, then just hold on to the outer foot, lifting the head. Holding like you're rocking a baby there. So you've got the whole leg. Now bring your right hand behind your head. So you're going to take it out to the side. And then bend the elbow. Take the hand behind the head. So now the head is resting there. I'm going to bring the foot in closer. See, can you take the toe? Supta Padangustasana 1. So this is going further with Supta Padangustasana 1. Stay with the breath. Observe whatever you feel. Breathe into it. And then straighten the arm. Straighten the leg. Keep extending through that left heel, descending the left thigh. And now bend the leg again. Get that external rotation and then straight the leg again. So you want that connection from the femur bone into the hip socket when you bring the leg up like that. Now extend the leg out, bend the knee, keep the right knee on the floor, left external rotating, hugging that leg into you again, holding onto the wrist, and then lifting up. Lift your chest, lift your head, bring your hand behind and See, can you hold on to the big toe? You can always take a strap there. And then holding that calf, lifting the chest, extend your right leg out. Observe the sensation that you feel, what the experience is in your left hip, in your gluteus. Bring the leg in towards you. Stay with your breath, soft breath. Relaxed breath. And then release. Straighten the leg. Still holding onto the toe. Extend through the back leg. Drawing the leg towards you any amount with a straight leg. And then bring the leg down. And back into straight legs, both legs on the floor. And now so lying in Supta Tadasana, we're going, I'm going to come up and I'm going to turn around to the wall. Okay, and so we'll go into Supta Padayanustasana 2 now. Raise the leg up. From Supta Padayanustasana 1, coming to Supta Padayanustasana 2. Lengthening, extend both arms. As you hold the toe, drawing back through the shoulder, even out both chests. And then bring the leg up, bring the leg down. Coming to the other side, Supta Padayanustasana 1. Extend the leg. Mm -hmm. 
and then bringing the leg over to the side. Opening through that front groin, front of the pelvis, creating some space now through the front of the pelvis before we were folding forward, deepening there in the hip joints. Stay with that breath. Continue lengthening through the straight leg. Both legs are straight. Inhale, lift the leg up. Supta Padayana one. Bend the knee. And I'll come into Baddha Kanasana. So both legs externally rotated. Bring the feet on the floor, adjust the hips, adjust the pelvis. So here I'm on the floor, I'm not on a bolster, but as we've been opening and deepening, let's use the bolster now. So if you have a bolster, you can take the bolster Bring your hips onto that bolster. Come close enough to the wall that you'll be able to use the, the toes at the wall and come into Baddha Kanasana. Here we're getting that extra opening. Legs are descending down with gravity. Bring your arms out to the side. Stay with the breath. Feeling the lengthening of the inhalation, lengthening of the exhalation. Bend your knees, bring your feet onto the floor, lift your hips, and slide the bolster down. So the bolster's underneath the knees, you can bend the knees, just relax the legs, relax the arms, and we'll take Shavasana like this. So making sure you've adjusted the pelvis, let the legs completely rest, relax, the front groin, the back groin, the hips are completely supported. Roll the shoulders under, turn the whole arm out, and then just be with the breath. Let the breath guide you deeper as you release. I'll set a timer for you. So just stay here. Let the body release completely. Let your mind let go. Namaste. Thank you for joining me. I hope you feel as good as I do. Whenever we work deeply on the hips, there's a lot that's released. There's a lot that's involved in the hip socket, the front growing, the back growing, and how it relates to the pelvis and the back. So enjoy the benefits of that practice today, and I will see you next time. Namaste.